talk about it being a letter or just read the letter? I would just read the letter. Say no more. I have your inquiry of October 25th pertaining to integration on the LSU campus. Though we did not like it, we accepted Negroes as students. We keep them in a given area and do not permit indiscriminate occupancy. To be specific, LSU does not favor whites and Negroes participating together on athletic teams. Troy Middleton, LSU president, 1961. 10 years after this letter was written, my father, Collis Temple, became the first black basketball player at LSU, paving the way for me and so many others. I'm Pelican's guard, Garrett Temple, and my history is black history. Along the walls in the halls of LSU, you will find the temple name. Grandpa. Grandpa. There you go, buddy. Grandpa. My father played here. So did my brother and I. But the temple name is not just tied to a basketball legacy. In fact, our connection with the school didn't start with my dad. So, dad. What's up, bro? What's going on, baby? Uh, those three letters you got on your shirt right there. Uh, the journey most people think started with you. Can you enlighten them uh, on the history of our family and this school and uh, what, what my grandfather, your dad, had to do with that? My dad wanted to get an, what's called an advanced degree. He had a degree from Southern University in agriculture. He wanted to get a master's in agriculture around 19, the mid 40s, late 40s. And so he applied to come to LSU. He applied a couple of times and was turned down. And then he ended up uh, challenging the system in a, in a class action suit involving uh, the likes of uh, Attorney Thurgood Marshall. They pushed an issue that, that said, well, since you're receiving this federal money, you need to allow anybody go to, to go to the school, whether you're black, white, a polka dot right. for the most part. Right. So the legislature in Louisiana allocated and appropriated funds. So he ended up accepting the money to go to Michigan State. And so Louisiana paid his fees to go to Michigan State. And then about 12 or 13 years after he finished uh, and, uh, and was a high school principal, the governor of Louisiana, John McKithen, uh, came to uh, Kentwood to discuss uh, me coming to LSU and integrating LSU. That was in 1969, I was 16 years old. A senior in high school at Kentwood High. When you talk about the 60s in general, uh, it was a time of social a major time of social unrest all over the country. There was a lot of social unrest. And of course, there was a backlash as a result of this stuff in the South, and, and it caused a lot of uh, consternation for a lot of people. So I've heard stories about your first few weekends at LSU, your, like, your time at LSU. What was your thought process after you decided that you were gonna go there, come here, I should say, and uh, take us through your mind and what you were going through mentally, getting ready to come here, and then while you were on campus here, the things that you had to go through and, and, and how that took a toll on you mentally or, 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 or you know, what you were thinking while that was going on. You know, athletics has done a, a tremendous amount to, to salvage a lot of um, negativity in this country. The schools did not fully integrate in Louisiana until I was a senior, so I was right. a freshman, and these guys had never really engaged right. with a black athlete or black person, socially or athletically. There was always a, um, a bit of posturing mm -hmm. that had to take place. It's not like you just like all the other athletes, you just get a trait and go sit down wherever you want, sit down with anybody. You looked in the guy's eyes, you watched their body language, mm -hmm. you knew 
if you were welcome and you knew if you were not welcome. Mm -hmm. And the majority of the time, it was not a welcoming, you know, feeling that you that was given off. So you're talking about athletes. What about your teammates? I mean, surely you could go sit with any, any of your teammates, right? Yeah, I sat. I sat with my. I sat with my teammates for the most part. For the I, most part. I also felt. Yeah, I also knew if I was really welcome to sit with my teammates, and if I wasn't, that that also took place. Um, just a routine, daily activity of uh, daily life as a student or a student athlete. You walk across the campus and people are yelling certain uh, epitaphs, saying certain, calling him, you know, who is that nigga, who is that coon? Um, what's that guy doing here? Uh, you had, and you just basically continue to walk and act like they weren't referring to you. Mm. At one time, I was called nigga by two different instructors uh, who I had to take classes from. Right. That was pretty challenging. Um, Did you ever come close to quitting? quitting? After my sophomore year, when a man named Dale Brown came, I went to Dale Brown's office to tell Dale Brown I was going to transfer. Mm. But I couldn't get it out. I couldn't tell him that I was going to transfer. So I told him that I wanted to redshirt. I told him I wanted a red shirt. And he asked me if I was crazy. And I was like, well, no, I'm not crazy. He said, you can out jump everybody we got and you can outrun everybody we got and you can probably outplay everybody on the team. And you're asking me about red shirt. You, you're not gonna red shirt. In fact, about it, you're gonna be the captain of the team. And I'm like, you know, you really put me in a bind now, coach. Right. I mean, I'm playing with guys who, some for the, for the most part, some guys who don't really want to pass me the ball. They don't want to really be on the team with me, and and that's tough within itself. And now you're gonna make tell me I'm gonna leave these guys. It's tough leaving a guy who doesn't want to necessarily play with you. Mm -hmm. This is 1970. We're, we're 52 years 71. removed. Mm -hmm. 52 years removed. Um, the starting lineup for LSU right now is all black. Uh, two of your sons went to school here. Um, when we went to the Final Four, our starting lineup was all black. For you to see the changes that have happened over the years, and not just in basketball, um, throughout, you know, in, 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 in LSU in general as a, as a university with uh, obviously, you know, the first black president being named to the university. You were the one who did the nomination. That was here by select. Dr. Tate as the next LSU president. Uh, what, what have, how does that make you feel to be able to see uh, things change? And uh, where do you think we, we are in terms of race relations here uh, at LSU? I think that uh, tremendous strides have been made in uh, at LSU. I think the tremendous strides have been made uh, as it relates to uh, enhancing higher education and involving uh, people of color. When you're 10 to 15, 10 to 17 years old, and you hear stories about how important for black folk to be able to gain access to Louisiana State University from your parents. And then you end up coming to LSU and playing basketball. And after my personal experiences over a four or five year period of time with LSU, intimately as it relates to athletics uh, and academics, uh, and to see and be sitting and be able to be sane and sober and experience being a part of naming this man the president of LSU in 19, in 2021. I was thinking about what my dad would think. It's been 40 years since my dad first set foot on LSU's campus. 
The trials and the trauma could have broken him. Instead, he used it all as a foundation to build up future generations of LSU athletes, including my brother and I. I just want to say that I'm uh, extremely proud of what you're doing and what you've accomplished. And I tell people from time to time when they ask me, are they, you know, people always want to say, okay, well, who's the best player? Who's the greatest player? Who did this? Who did that? And um, I think that uh, all of those things are, are, are well and good, but your, uh, the way you carry yourself and the way you embrace life and the way you take care of your family and the way you are focused about uh, the important things in life is, uh, is you know, it's, it's like heartwarming to me. And um, I'm always proud of how you perform, uh, particularly off the court, uh, obviously on the court. I'm just happy that you have uh, taken hold to uh, life in a manner that uh, is gonna allow everybody that you touch to, to feel like they're gonna you know, have a good experience and be productive. Appreciate you. Yeah. Got it from you, baby. His pride in me could never compare to how in awe I am of him for what he endured and the legacy he left behind. Thank you, Dad, for paving the way and serving as a living reminder of how far we've come and how much farther we have to go.